This is a Rollmaster Classic actual play set in Terry Kayanthra's excellent Shadow World using Fantasy Grounds. You can find session summaries, items and characters on World Anvil where our campaign is called The Praise of Old Men. You'll find links to that and our other forms of media for our sessions as well as an index of this episode in the description. As usual, this episode has jump cuts to keep the runtime down. And just before the last session summary, I want to thank our podcast listeners out there. We broke 3,000 downloads this week. Cheers! Previously, Sherry and Numa will take time to recover their wits before venturing out into Tarek Nev again. Fortunately, two survivors from a downed skyship have decided to join the group of adventurers. Time will tell if the Lan Archer Acor and Snarkle and Amari Warrior are adequate replacements. Continuing their search for the other artifact, the other portal rod, the party came across a stone area inlaid with geometric patterns. In its centre were two fallen figures, one a winged Amarishi. Silk rushed in to investigate a crown which brought a half-spherical barrier down over her. We pick up just after a tall, thin demon has risen out of the Amarishi corpse, seeming to recognise the now-trapped elf and had stepped towards her. Oh, oh dear. Right, okay, I uh, have I seen anything like this before, so I have warding law, I don't know if that's useful. Uh, yeah, give me a roll on warding law. Uh, give me a hard, with a hard modifier, please. Warding law is not your, and warding spells are not your expertise, but you've got enough uh, book learning to know something about these. Uh, and that's good enough. All of those hours spent tucked up in the attic when everybody else was playing hide and seek. <laughs> um, you playing read the book, which is a fascinating game for one person. Um <laughs> Yeah, the that's what he told his mum he was playing with anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not reading the words, mum. I'm looking at the pictures. I'm like every other normal boy. Why is there a hole in the cover? <laughs> Where are my tissues? Um, okay, I'm reading feverishly here. <laughs> All right, so so this is getting a little bit unsavoury. So uh, well, welcome, Colin. Okay, so. You're aware that this is uh, this is clearly some sort of ward has been triggered, given the effect and the size of the spell. You suspect that this isn't the most powerful of warding spells. It's going to be more of an inconvenience. Unfortunately, this inconvenience has left Silk trapped with something inside whatever it is that triggered this ward. It's, so I'm know. not. No one's in. Cran's not in. So it's no, essentially a still. ball around there. Okay, gotcha. It's going around the whole inner circle. So without a spell, a specific spell that will break this ward, Ugnan, basically physical battering at this ward is what you're going to have to do to break it. Uh, lads, lasses, <laughs> you'll have to try and break your way through this. I'm afraid I don't know how to do it through arcane ways. Probably his turn. Okay. Acor. You too can see that your new elven companion has stepped into this circle and suddenly you can see that shimmering in the air as, according to Ugnan, some sort of ward spell has been activated. You can't see any direct threat to her, however, but a ward has been activated. Ugnan has warned you that the only way of breaching this is to basically hit it with stuff to break it down physically. What do you want to do? I think I'm going to shoot an arrow, but I don't think I'm going to risk making matters worse by shooting it straight at the arrow issue. So I think I'm going to sort of perhaps a bit of a warning shot okay. over everyone's head, but hit, hitting the wall. So do you want to, I mean, you can hold your fire and see what develops, or you can maybe switch weapons. Um, and maybe hurl a, a knife at it and see if that breaks it or does anything. Uh, I think I'll, I'll hold my position and see what happens then. Cause... Okay. Yeah, I don't okay. know. All right. So Acor holds his arrow and looks for some direct threat. Cran. So Cran will uh, start shooting. He was going to start drawing the sword, then he bump, bounces off the. Then he moves like a foot or two, bump, bumps into the. Yep. She'll, here's what Ugnan says. She that grabs the his old trusty axe, um, spits in one of his hands, rubs it in the other one, and then takes it in both and just swings it full power into the shield with all his strength. 
Okay, so um, let's see. Can you just give me? Yeah, just just roll to hit. There's no target, but I think you you should still get a roll yep. to hit. And uh, then I can take it from there. Oh, oh it didn't oh. quite fumble. Oh, wow. It was a close to fumble. Well, I think, actually, are you sure? It's a four, not a fumble. I think it is, but... Fumble. I it think it's a uh, fumble. Combat. Hang on, let me hit a little... Fumble five, five yeah, yeah, it is. Sorry. Okay. It's a... oh, it, it, in so RMU, friend... though, does, doesn't it reduce the fumbles the more ranks you have? But I don't think it works in RMC. It doesn't work no, in doesn't. RMC. Um, men were men with RMC. <laughs> That's right. Um, we didn't make a, uh, I've, I've got massive problems with fumble and critical rules that don't scale with level. But anyway. <laughs> but as the dungeon master, I absolutely do not. Um, okay, so <laughs> uh, the, uh, your battle axe is two-handed as well, which is better, isn't it? It is two-handed, which which it gives me extra extra damage on a critical. <laughs> yeah, assault, right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so can you give me a D one hundred fumble roll, please? Turtle. And it's isn't it open ended as well? No, no, it's just a D one hundred. Seventy two. I brain myself with it. <laughs> you are stunned and unable to parry for two rounds. Not good. Quote unquote. <laughs> So you strike the uh, shimmering wall with your axe and it does twist in your hands, almost dislocating a wrist. Um, you manage to keep hold of the battle axe with your left hand, but your right hand is throbbing and hurting and is enough to leave you stunned for two rounds, I'm afraid. So... Uh... <laughs> Thank you for that. So stunned for two rounds. Okay. Uh, Snarkle will, seeing what you've done and trying to attack, he'll almost shrug. He'll step up. He's clenching his pipe with his two hands. And he'll <laughs> attack with his, uh, sorry, he's clenching his pipe between his teeth. Um, he's not going to attack the wall with his pipe, God forbid. And he smashes out at the wall as well. Is he a pipe hitting northerner? <laughs> yes, I should to, have to, to paraphrase that. a pulp fiction. <laughs> pulp fiction. Yes, I should have actually said to uh, Jan, look, it's going to be much more fun if you just let him go into battle with a length of lead piping. That'll be much more fun. <laughs> okay, so he manages to roll an E critical. So he hammers into the wall, and you can hear that there's almost the sound of uh, cracking and you can see that the image shudders uh, is still there, but shudders, moves and flexes. And the glass becomes a little bit more opaque. So actually, rather than being able to see silk clearly, silk now becomes a little bit harder to see, almost as if the glass has become frosted. Oh, we can get a bit for you, lad. So. Give it another crack like that. You'd have it. <laughs> okay, initiative rolls, please. Silk, it would be a good idea for you to win this one, please. I'll try. Oh, another another three, a two and a one. That's pretty bad initiative roll. <laughs> Silk, you do get to go first. This black demon, which is vaguely familiar from your childhood. Oh, God. I'm going to make a not fainting roll then because I said I was going to faint just because of the way you were making it sound. So here we go. Oh, yeah, she'll steal her resolve and she is, well, she'll at least back up and then find it solid, you said? Yeah. So that's 5, 10, 15, say 20 feet, uh, 15 feet. And then she'll whirl around and throw a, a shock bolt at it. Yep. No, it can't be. Daddy! <laughs> yeah, that's right. Le level four is a zero prep now, Matt. Oh, water bolt maybe then. No, we'll do shock bolt. That's her MO. Come on, that's that's your MO. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's garbage, maybe. but that's actually gonna strike it for six points of damage. And you managed to do that a electricity critical. Oh, wow. So, is it large, though? Because that would be negated. No. 
Okay. No, Here we go. Hundred. No more nose. <laughs> <laughs> the lightning bolt strikes the demon and halos the creature in a blue nimbus of light. The creature shudders but throws its arms out wide and you can see it uses its arms to discharge the electricity. The electricity flows round it, through it, collects perhaps in the creature's core and then discharges through its fingertips. Uh oh, this is going to hurt. The creature, whatever it is, then takes a couple more steps towards you, Silk. It is clearly enjoying this and you can hear it and see it. You have grown greatly in power, little one. Since the little girl that I first visited, you've become so much stronger. I think I will enjoy this. And the creature steps right up to you oh and my. breathes on you. As it breathes on you, Silk, a black mist fills the air around you and covers you completely. Can okay. you give me a channeling resistance roll, please? Channeling, here we go. No. Okay, thank you very much. You also get a 30 for a range. Uh, yep, that's great. Okay, Silk, you can feel a presence inside your head. The name of the presence inside your head yep. is Argamanthol Raz. I'll type that for you. Okay. Though you don't hear it uh, announce its name, you know that's what this creature's name is. And okay. this creature is now inside you. Every single round, you are going to have to wrestle with this demon for possession of your soul and your body. If you fail, then Silk, as we know, know her, ceases to exist. Once the demon has possession of your soul and your true name, for that's what it's after. Uh, what this demon has sought ever since your birth is your birth name, your true name. Right. Um, demons and demon binding and all the rest of it work through the true name. Now, Cran, as a fairly typical human, just has Cran. That's not his true name. His true name is for him to discover. Similarly, Ugnan, Victoria and Acor as well. For the elves and elven kind, you have a true name, which are only you and your closest, closest family know. Your brothers and sisters might not even your true name. For you people believe that your true name is the name of your soul. The mm. name Silk is just your body. Right. That's that. That's just a bodily name. You could change it in the same way that your body, body changes. Look at Victoria. But you're aware, and I suppose you might have been slightly smug, that when Victor changed to Victoria, uh, yes, Victor, Victoria's body changed, and... And Victor changed his name because that's what humans, you know, the poor children that they are do. What Victor Victoria just doesn't isn't aware of is he's still the same person and he's still got the same name. But and you can't help but feel sorrow for, for the humans around you and also the dwarves as well. They don't understand the importance and the value of your true name. So as this demon wrestles with you, Silk, what you're wrestling for is knowledge of your true name. Yep. If Argamanthal Raz gets your true name, you're toast. There's no Understood. resurrection. You're, you're gone. However, you know its true name. Um, you have to try and communicate that to everybody else. Now, if they've got spells of demon summoning, demon binding... They can use that name and cast the demon out. If they've got spells of demon summoning a demon binding, I'm killing them immediately. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> That's why she didn't take it this level. <laughs> no. Okay. Right. <laughs> Ugnan, it's your turn. The crystal. Now you're unaware of all of this. Yeah. Apart from you might see Silk shudder slightly as, as if something has happened. The corpse of the Amarishi is now motionless. The crown has stopped moving. Something else is happening. 
the ward is close to collapse. What do you want to do? I'm going to try and see if a spell works through it. So he'll cast uh, a low-level spell, uh, Aura, uh, which is plus 10 dB to Silk, just to see if it gets through. Okay. Uh, yeah, normal spell roll. Okay, you cast your Aura spell, and you can see that the glass or the ward strengthens. Oh, okay. So you're spell you're aware you're you're no fool clearly um has has used the energy the power of your spell to kind of quite to to heal it okay mm. no magic weapons okay. victoria oh <sighs> what do you mean no magic weapons well my magic healed it so if there's any magic in your weapons you might be giving it some more power i mean i only have magic weapons <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> Victoria looks at it and goes, What do you want me to do? Headbutt it. Absolutely. Pick up a big pillow from down behind you. Uh, Ugden tosses his hand axe, but you can't do that until, until his turn. You can have his hand axe if you want. It's well made, but it's not magic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ah, fuck so... it. I'll try hitting it with a remorse. Okay, so you take your. Demon bladed scythe yeah. and attack award. Okay, off you go. So just give me a regular to hit roll because that will uh, create a, uh, a critical for me. So, uh, yeah, you don't need to target anything. Just double click on your OB. There you go. Yeah, that's fine. You hit it with uh, the scythe. Can you give me an E critical roll, please? So this is the scythe. Damn. Uh, the wards, right? The ward collapses instantly. Oh. Like I said, magic weapons only. <laughs> As your, uh, you know that remorse is unlike many of the other magic weapons that you've got in the party, which are aligned to good. Remorse isn't. Remorse has the soul of a demon trapped inside it. You've decided to wield the scythe, even so. To be honest, the scythe hasn't seemed to have any ill effects on you at all. Clearly, the sort of magic and demonic power that is invested in the scythe is exactly what would bring the ward down, as luck would have it. The ward has completely collapsed as if it was made of paper, Victoria. Acor, it's your turn. You can now see that there is um, this fading black mist in front of Silk. The mist is now beginning to spread and dissipate and fade away. There's the corpse of this Amarishi, this winged angelic creature lying on the ground. But Silk seems affected by some sort of spell or the ward. She is standing there just shaking slightly. What do you wish to do? I think I'm just going to hold, hold off that thing. I'm not going to fire it if there's nothing for me to fire. I don't really know no. what's going on. No, there doesn't seem to be anything to hit at all, unless you wanted to take a pot shot at what seems to be a, a bunch of mist or a collection of black mist that's fading. Okay, Cran. So Cran will just stumble forwards a bit. Now this has disappeared. He's still stunned. Yes. But so I take it, I, I saw this thing dissipate really easily. I, I, I... Uh, well, all you can see, no, you, you saw nothing of this thing approach Sorry, uh, not the thing. The I saw the barrier disappear because all I've been yeah, trying to do is get through it. Yeah, you've seen the barrier disappear, and now the barrier's disappeared. You can see that Silk is shuddering and seems to be. She's affected by something. She's not collapsed or anything, and you can see, uh, not three or four inches from her, what looks to be a thickening in the air of blackish mist, but that blackish mist seems to be fading and breaking apart. Whatever so I'll just was. stumble in. I'm, I'll just stumble in. I can't do anything really el else, but um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of got to get a defensive stance up and parry. But that's really all I'm doing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Snarkle, obviously, with nothing to fight, he steps into the ring as well, ready. Uh, and you might notice that actually, Cran, as a as a warrior like yourself, he takes up a position on your flank. 
as a warrior would be trained to do. Cran, you've got experience of fighting in mercenary companies. Snarkle clearly has that same experience. And as you just check back as is habit with one of your kind uh, to see where your other party are, you can see that the distance that, for example, Acor has taken and the stance that he's taken with his feet positioning side on stance to provide less of a target to um, a combatant. Clearly, Acor has got some military experience of some sort, too. The, the two people that you've picked up aren't just street thugs, mercenaries, caravan guards. Both have served in mercenary companies at some point at some time and are trained and experienced. So all I'll, okay. I'll say in a bit of a staggered way is like, Oi, buddy, protect Silk. OK, we'll have one more roll of initiatives, please. Silk, I need another don't really want a channeling resistance roll i'd like a, a will roll if you like um i just calculated something like that just oh case. that's right yes that will do sorry yes i did see that can you give me a will roll then please and i will do the same for this creature let me have a look at what you've done yeah yes yeah I, yeah i like that it's been years since i've made one of these yeah same <laughs> vaguely there that is vaguely familiar okay so you basically have to beat it on a will roll right or it has to beat you to begin this process of taking possession so it's going to get do you want me to roll in the tower too just so that you know and nobody else like I, technically yes please yes nobody, please, else, nobody, should nobody else should know whether you've been possessed or not yeah Except for the, you know, bright red eyes. <laughs> That's the end. Oh, that was fun. Yeah. Based on based on behavior, we wouldn't know anyway. So, <laughs> Yeah, right. So the, the total of my uh, magic resistance rules for my race is minus 15. That's the same negative as my terror roll. So I've added 45 to my terror to make 30, which is my complete total for willpower. So okay. I'll make a terror roll modified okay. and i promise i'll remove it later because i'm not that good at terror <laughs> so here we go wish me luck boys good luck you got this the good oh, news boy. is it didn't rule the second time <laughs> okay okay silk you are struggling to keep yourself together the demon that you face is and we've not really delved much into your background but as the rest of the party are aware you are quite sensitive to demons and demonology you have a natural and instinctive affinity for them in terms of sensing knowing and so on you've got an insatiable inquisitive nature about most things but bizarrely, you both show a great loathing and fear of demonology, but also it's probably one of your deepest interests. It's what it is probably the thing that you are most conflicted over. The party have often wondered why you just have this thing about and for demons. It all actually stems from your childhood. And it perhaps stems from one of your very, very, very earliest memories. There was an evening when you were probably quite ill. And your mother or your father, your choice, had stayed awake with you. And they told you the next day that though you were at home, wherever your home was, something really peculiar happened. The place where you were living had long had not a reputation, but people said weird things had happened, strange things had happened. The house, the tent, the tree, whatever, had been haunted. As you lay there ill at the peak of your fever, your mother, exhausted through caring for you, fell asleep. And as she began to wake, where she was in that position of being not awake, but not asleep, she swears to the very end of her days that there was the figure of a man, 
uh, human elf she couldn't tell, who was sitting next to you, holding your hand. Now, although she perhaps should have found this reassuring because the man was just holding your hand, it was terrifying. But what really has still remained with her for all of her days was the fact that because she was between waking and sleep, she couldn't do anything. She couldn't scream for help in her dreams and she couldn't scream for help in reality because she was neither awake nor asleep. She was like a fly in amber watching as this dark human held your hand. She watched this scene play out for what felt like hours, but the creature didn't seem to do anything. It just, after holding your hand for the longest period of time, just vanished. Your mother then woke up, ran to you, but your fever had passed. You can't really recall much of this at all, apart from the fact that you know that you were ill and you know that you had a dream where you were offered the chance to recover. Somebody said, do you want to get better, little one? This is all you need to do. Trust me. And you did. Now that creature from your past has come back for you. And that's what you're warring with. And you're losing, sadly. Um, so the roles were identical, Silk. So you are tied. So we're going to make this roll next round again. Wow. OK, uh, sorry, guys, uh, that was just a, a little bit of sort of uh, scene setting for what's happening. Cool. That's cool. Ugnan, it okay, is your so turn. What's Ugnan seeing in front of me? Can he read? Does he know that um, she's being possessed? I mean, is she awake? Is she conscious? She is conscious, but she seems to be in some sort of uh, stupor or it's not really a stupor. She seems to be paralyzed. She is not responsive. Um, as you approach her, you can see that her eyes are flickering. They've not rolled back. She seems to be in some sort of um, having a fit, as it were. Mm, so I don't know, because obviously we know it's going outside again, but in game, I don't know what he would know if it's medical possession or anything. You probably know enough with the ward that there's something magical going on. You didn't see any assault, so you're unaware of any demon. You could jump to the conclusion that she's under the attack of some sort of spell or some sort of trap that's been triggered. Some kind of a... She's she's under some kind of spell. Oi, uh, lad, can you get the Horn of Valhalla, fill it, and try and stick it in her mouth? And then he starts mumbling, um, preparing a spell. Okay. The creature's had its attack. Fran, <laughs> what do you want to do? Silk is obviously struggling. So he shook off his fug. Um, yeah, so I'll say, fucking killing it. It's going to be faster than that. And, and he, but he rips it off of, over his shoulder and just throws it back to him. And then he tries to embed his sword in it. Okay. He was he was parrying in case it attacked him. So it's not going to be a great attack. But uh, So I'll pass you the uh, Horn of Valhalla, Ugnan. Okay. Okay. So what, what are you actually attacking? Sorry, Cran. I... I'm attacking the Amarishi. If I can see it now, I'm inside the circle. If I can't, oh, yeah. well, I'll just... Uh, yes, you can. No, the Amarishi body, sorry, is back here in the centre, remember, lying motionless on the ground. No, it's the it's the demonic thing, the black you... coalescing... No, that black mist smoke. is all but gone now. You can swing your sword at it if you want, but your sword just passes through black mist. Um, okay. And more than anything, you almost sort of dislocate your shoulder as you put your back into your swing and there's nothing there to hit. Gotcha. Okay, so yeah, to Cram would definitely do that anyway. Uh, he doesn't understand right. supernatural too much. Um, <laughs> and, and now he's looking at looking at Ugnan a bit sheepishly about, oh fuck, maybe you should have done what he says. <laughs> um, and, and, and Ugnan, shall I go and stab the body? What should I do? <laughs> That's all we can do, really. Okay. So Ugnan takes, uh, sorry, Cran takes a massive swing. The blade goes through the black mist. He almost falls over with the power of the swing and sort of looks around helplessly with nothing to attack. How on earth does he help? Silk, Acor, you're in a similar position. There doesn't seem to be anything atta to attack. What do you want to do? This has um, not been the most exciting of games for Acor the Archer, I have to say. I think I'm going to secretly wonder whether I wouldn't have been better off going down with the ship 
and then hold off high and see see what <laughs> okay ship cruise they said mystery tour they said <laughs> Three hours bloody later, I've got no money, no, um, I've lost all my gear, and I've been walking around for four poxy hours with a knocked arrow and no, nothing to shoot at, not even a bloody what? scarecrow. Okay, Victoria, you're you're aware that your scythe took this ward apart as if it was made of paper. You can also obviously see that Silk is clearly the victim of some sort of spell or trap or something, but there doesn't seem to be any way of helping her. What do you want to do? Can I see see the crown on the Yes, there is the a body. crown on the Amarishi body. Yep. I want to try and uh, take that off. Okay. See if that does anything. All right. So you move up to the Amarishi body. You can grasp the silver crown and you can take it off. It doesn't seem to have, looking over at silk, it doesn't seem to have any effect at all. If you want to put in your inventory victoria the silver crown that you've taken is worth 500 gold coins so oh, don't tell is, the dwarf <laughs> it's extremely valuable yes now was going i knew we should have taken it i knew we should have gone taken it <laughs> snarkle steps round looking for a threat but there isn't one but he obviously notices that uh, Victoria has taken the crown. And you might see that he's just nods and kind of mutters, OK, I see how this is going to work. But he, he doesn't say anything else. What? Every man and woman you. for themselves. He, he, looks, he looks at you, Victoria, and just uh, looks at you with wide eyes and just takes his pipe out, looks at his pipe, gone out. And puts it back in his mouth and then looks at you completely innocently as if to say, what? I didn't say anything. Let's go to one last round of initiatives, please. I think that will then, that will then clear this little bit, I'm hoping. Silk, off we go. Let's have another roll, please. Here we go. Willpower. She Come shuts on. her eyes. Good luck. And keep it secret if you want until after, GM. You don't have to say anything right now. Okay. Um, I'm not going to. Okay. Silk stands up almost on her tiptoes. And then you can't help but notice she levitates. She rises about two or three inches off the ground. Legs locked straight. Toes pointed to the ground. Head pointing upwards. Shoulders shaking. And then she drops to the ground. And then almost collapses to her knees, but catches herself and stands up and looks around slightly dazed, breathing slightly more heavily. But she nods and looks around at you. She's back to her senses. Um, let me just tell Silk what happened. Roll a new character. Yeah. So um, rather than send you into another chat window, I've just sent you that message, uh, Silk. Okay. okay, so Silk comes to her senses. Um, Ugnan, you'll remember that you too have had some sort of close encounter of the supernatural um, kind. Yep. Every evening or the equivalent of evening, Orgiana, your deity has been visiting you only you can see her clearly because only you believe in her it's clear that she wants companionship and she's somewhat intrigued and fascinated with your party she doesn't quite like your party but she does find them interesting and she is very keen that you spread her name and spread her worship and at the moment, she's doing everything she can to help you. So when you retreated to the palace, for example, and began to rest, Orgiana sort of stepped out of her corner of the room that you were in, silently came towards you and knelt down near you. She put an impossibly beautiful head on, on one side, uh, lifting it off her shoulders. No, she basically <laughs> just tilted her head slightly. <laughs> 
Uh, I've always found that phrase troubling and stared sort of up at you from her kneeling position, uh, clearly concerned at the level of your fatigue. And again, she made that offer of helping you. You being you and somewhat suspicious, you refused her divine aid because you're still somewhat reluctant and um let me see um there's a certain amount of trepidation in you about worshipping her and she then sort of nodded her head sadly didn't force the issue and then stepped away back into the shadows anyway um so that's what's going on in your life silk seems fine but you can hear that telltale seductive feminine voice of them saying be very careful my priest be very careful indeed. What do you want to do, Ugnan? He's going to give the Horn of Valhalla to Silk. Drink that, please. Okay. Sure. Silk, take... Oh, you pardon the phrase. Silk's got the horn, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. There's no way of getting around the fact that I'm going to say Silk grasps the horn. <laughs> and she, so she put it to her lips. Yeah, Sorry. she puts it to her lips. Okay, <laughs> Silk, you remember, all of you will remember, I'm so embarrassed about this group. Silk, you recall, all of you will recall that the horn is this ivory drinking vessel, which is powerfully enchanted. It's something of an artifact. Uh, can you all give me perception rolls, please? Silk, can I just ask, are you wearing anything silver? Mm, I think my ring multiplier is a silver ring. Yeah, okay. times two PowerPoint multiplier. Okay, and it's silver. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, the end of the drinking vessel is made of silver. And as Silk nonchalantly goes to put that to her lips to drink from, sorry, um, the open end, sorry, is silvered. As she goes to drink from that silvered end, you can she, see that she pauses and looks at the horn as if it's poisoned. Silk, the ring that you wear, your PowerPoint multiplier is painful. It's burning. It's, it's like having something that is really, really hot on your finger. It's quite localized and it's getting worse to the point where if you don't take it off soon, your skin is going to blister. Similarly, the drinking horn that you've got, the silvering around the edge, that's going to be really nasty. If you put that to your lips, you're probably going to get burnt. Mm. She'll, she'll take it. You're still, you'll drink from the vessel? Yep. Okay. Silk, you pull a face and drink from the vessel. And as your lips make contact with the silver, the silver tarnishes. Goes greenish. Almost as if it's um, begun to oxidize. The ring. Oh, yeah, can you see that? There's something from there. Okay, Victoria, what do you want to do? You're probably focused on the crown. So if you turn and look at what's happening behind you, I'm going to ask you to make a perception roll to notice yeah. um, a very hard perception roll to notice what's happening with the drinking vessel, please. Otherwise, you're going to be totally oblivious to it. The drinking vessel, the lip of it, tarnishes as it makes contact with Silk's mouth. I don't really know what to do. <laughs> Just going to move forward up towards Silk. Keep with a closer eye on scythe, her. With the scythe nonchalantly in my hands, <laughs> poised to swing. <laughs> Just because that's what we Off do. Off with the red. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> Cran, can you give me um, just a hard perception roll, please? Sure. You notice that Silk is reluctant at first to drink from the vessel, but she does. You're not sure, but you thought something has changed about the drinking vessel. It must be the light. You, you, you thought it changed slightly, but you, you're probably wrong. What do you want to do? Oh, you had me worried there, Silk. Though. Yeah, you had me, you had me worried there. Uh, take another, take another, take all of it down. It'll help you, I think. And he looks over at Ogden because he has no idea what the hell the horn really does. But um, yeah, just drink it all. And Ogden, you want to give us some, uh, some, some herbs and stuff? I think that'll help. Okay, yep. if in doubt, give them herbs. 
Rook. That'll sort every problem. <laughs> Rook. <laughs> Acor. Um, sadly, there is still nothing for you to hit with your bow, but the party seems <laughs> concerned. Um, well, not hit with your bow, to shoot with your arrow. That would be a foolish use of a longbow, really, to use it as a club. There is nothing for you to fire at, but party seems to be gowned the elven magic user, Silk, as if there's something wrong with her. All right, we'll come back to Acor in a minute. <laughs> um, I will just go to Snarkle. Snarkle, who is on the scene, so to speak, will also make a perception roll. That's not going to do anything either, so he doesn't see anything. We're now sort of out of the combat tracker and initiative. So if Cram, um, uh, sorry, if, if Ogden then can talk, he is actually going to say, uh, yeah. lad, lad, get your rope. And then he's going to get his bandage out. So I need to uh, look to those wounds. And then he's going to try and bind her mouth. She's possessed. Tire. Okay. What? Look at the okay. horn. She's bugging it up. All right. What if you silk? What do you want to do? Okay. Uh, weeping. Okay. So, all right. We're going to have to go back into the combat tracker then. Can you give me initiative <laughs> rolls, please, everybody? Oh, my God. I reckon 30 years of dungeon mastering and get running games i've never had a party so willing to split up to go in different directions to oppose each other's dice rolls to attack each other <laughs> and this is all <laughs> done victoria via... nearly killed cran last week <laughs> i know and this is all done via a virtual platform this would be this would be difficult if we're doing this face to face yeah but to be fair okay. though, didn't you try and kill her the week before when you were in that rage yes that's a fair point uh okay silk you're aware that Ugnan is a little bit edgy and he's noticed what's happened with the horn that you've drunk from. You know that why the horn has changed. So essentially, the spirit in you tarnishes silver and finds silver quite, quite toxic. That's why the horn has changed colour and it's why your ring is doing what it's doing so you go fast oh, sorry first yeah. and you go fast as well <laughs> so can i have she was right. going to cast leaping but things but better right. yeah that's right okay so can you make your spell casting roll so silk looks around anxiously and then panics and casts a spell or tries to off you go yeah, good. Okay. And she vanishes. Silk, do you want to move your token? You've got, I think we you calculated 25%, haven't you? Where do you want to move to? Uh, I'll tell you and I'll just delete my token. Okay. What do you mean? You don't trust us? <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to watch my stream to know where I go. <laughs> oh, that's quite vicious. Okay, so Silk vanishes. She's panicked, perhaps. Cran, what do you want to do? Cran will like spin three sixty around, just looking every every direction for her. What do you mean, Uncle? What What do you mean she's gone funny? She's nipped a fucking horn as well. Look, where is she? And he'll, yep. he'll try and look. All, he'll look all the way around the uh, perimeter of the little uh, area we're in, see if you can see her anywhere. Okay, you can give me a sheer folly perception roll then. Although Silk is vanished, invisible, you may catch a trace of her movement, but she's not heavily armoured. She does walk with elven grace. Um, there's not much evidence of where she's gone at all. You can't hear her. You can't see her at all, Cran. Ugnan, what, Ugnan, what did you mean? Vanished. She's gone. Well, What's up? Victoria, you can similarly make a sheer folly perception roll to kind of try and get a feeling for where she went. Yeah. Okay. You can see that vegetation just behind Ugnan shivers slightly as if something has moved through it, but that's it. Okay. She might have headed towards Acor. What do you want uh, to do? Can I still move? Yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah, you can move um, 50%. Drop the side and uh, like run with my arms uh, to the sides, trying to like yeah, run into her. 
Okay, so move your token, please. Okay. So you run to about here, get uh, what Acor sees is <laughs> um, if you, oh my God. So what Acor sees while they is you sure is suddenly <laughs> throw her arms out to the sides and run towards him. <laughs> shoot him, shoot him. You've had that arrow <laughs> knocked all night. This is it. <laughs> this is your chance. I'm just going um, in for a hug. Yeah, they've all said that, says April, <laughs> stepping back and letting fly. Ugnan, it's your turn. Victoria bizarrely drops her scythe and sort of does the Heathcliff Heathcliff thing <laughs> and runs off into the, towards Acor. Uh, they've so all gone barmy. When she went invisible, was there no way I could have just grabbed hold of her? Considering I'm presuming she was taking a round to prepare this. No, it wasn't a round to prepare, was it, Silk? It's an instant spell, I think. Fourth level. Uh, Ugnan said we could cast now. Yeah, zero yeah. prep, one oh, to yeah. cast. Yeah. yeah, so she casts and goes invisible. Then it's your turn. So, no. Okay, he's going because, to prepare a spell. Uh, the, the reason I'm saying that is because otherwise every, anybody else with an instant spell, I, they cast and it comes into effect. You're kind of setting up, can I do something to interfere with their spell? And I do be... like that in a way, but I, I understand. It breaks the idea of the initiative role, time. doesn't it? I, I do as well, but it, it then means, okay, so suppose I want to make an attack. Could somebody dodge before I make my attack? Right. Do you, do you see what I mean? Yeah, um, that's true. So um, she's vanished and she has moved somewhere. You again, because you were right on top of her, so to speak, Rather than it being a sheer folly, can you give me a very hard perception roll, please, to to get an idea of where she ran to? Uh, okay, but I think I'd rather use the activity to prepare a spell. Okay, fine. That that's fine then, if you wanted to. Okay, uh, so you're preparing a spell. Uh, Acor, uh, Colin, if you can hear us, etc. Like I said, Victoria just runs towards you with her arms out. She's you can see by the way that she's scanning left and right. She's truly clearly trying to catch something. You're no fool. You as could probably assume that she's trying to catch Silk, who's gone invisible and vanished. What do you want to do? Can I do a perception check? Yes, you can. That? Now. As it happens, Silk is running towards you. So I'm going to ask you to make a very hard perception roll. So to do that, if you just click on the, you can see on the bottom, the very hard light, etc. If you click on that, that will automatically set up that modifier. Um, oh, excellent. That's brilliant. Yeah, you know that Silk ran past you and you know that she's somewhere off in this direction. Yeah, What's... Yeah, you've got a, you've got fifty percent. So that's enough if you wanted to fire your arrow finally at somebody, or enough if you wanted to run towards her. It'd be hilarious. The first ever action in the game is to kill Silk. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I love story driven <laughs> stuff, man. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna have to lose this arrow, aren't I? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like good. Good. Token good, yeah. So um this is oh sorry, not Victoria. I'm very sorry about that, Victoria. I don't want you attacked. Silk, there you go. You're gonna get a plus thirty-five bonus to this acor as well because it's a rear attack. Uh, actually, this could be quite quite uh, a damaging attack roll. So that's that's a hit. That's twenty-two points of damage on silk. And a D puncture critical, please. Is that including um, the minus for being invisible? Minus no, 50 or 100? Uh, let me take that. Sorry. So that is blind. Thank you. I forgot about that. So that's actually 14 points. It should still hurt. Yeah. Yeah. And it is a B puncture critical. Sorry. Um, so can you now just roll a d100, please? There's an arrow that thumps into the leg, into your leg silk, which means you're bleeding for one round. You take one more hit point. Ow! She screams out. Ooh. Okay, so you've spectacularly failed your self-discipline roll. Yeah, you let's out a yell. Okay. 
and she's their GM. I just put her up. Okay, thank you. So Snarkle will run off. Well, Snarkle will trot probably over to here and then pause because he doesn't really know what the hell's going on. I mean, is Silk one of your companions or not? Why would she run away? Okay. Uh, let's have some initiative rolls, please. Silk, you are now visible. You've been hit by an arrow. What do you want to do? Your the silver she... ring on your finger is now really very very painful. You're minus ten to all your activities. Right. She'll she'll keep it on for now, but she'll move again her twenty five percent. Yep. Basically here, and then she's going to cast. I'll let you know. Okay. Ugnan, what do you want to do? Silk is clearly uh... running around the wall. You could try and hit her with hold kind if possible. Okay. Silk, is your spell instantaneous? Within the rest of her round, yeah, she'll get it off. Okay. It's uh, third level. All right. Okay, so uh, which direction do you want to head? Uh, I wrote, at least from what you can see there, I, uh, you pick a, a way. Okay. Uh, right, so you're... Okay. So can you roll your spell, please? You bet. Stop rolling okay. wild silk. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt, right? You We're saw me to roll my self-discipline. Okay. I, I know. Uh, I let you shoot me. <laughs> okay. Silk has vanished. Again. Uh, so, Ugnan, as you step out to cast your hold kind, do you need a line of sight on them? Think yes, you do, don't you? Yeah. So you've got casting a spell is what 50 75 percent. Yep. So you've got something that would take you to there, which would take you just within sight. Perhaps she vanishes again. Uh, can you give me have you got any sort of spell law role, please? Right. Oh, so hang on, hang on. You've, you've got flamboyant gestures on that one. Sorry. Uh. <laughs> Okay. I've got vision to like Agnan just just doing like some disco dancing in the middle of the square right now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. What are you doing? You can tell by the way I use my walk. I'm a woman's man. <laughs> Take away fifty. I want to hear that a second time, point, please. No, no, we never ever want to hear that again. <laughs> um, I am twitch clipping that right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's going to be a meme, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay. Kevin. Okay, so you're probably aware, I think you'd know, um, Ugnan, that this time, rather than vanishing, Silk has cast some sort of teleportation spell of some description, because rather than just vanish, you can see just a faint hint of her moving before she vanishes, it, almost as if she's walking somewhere and then is going to appear somewhere else. Right, rather okay. than just standing still vanishing she's gone now remember your vision is limited to about 60 feet she was at the edge of what you could see anyway with all this black murk around you wherever she's gone now she's out of sight gone totally you can let that spell go and you've still got 75 percent of your activity lost uh, left sorry yeah he's gonna stop doing that I can uh, I can still track her, but uh, uh, don't know what you feel about. So is she? What the fuck's happened to her? I think she's. What's uh, going on? I've been... She's had some kind of fight. So I think so I think it's tarnished the the the, the goblet, the the horn of Valhalla, and uh, well, you see, I'm which lies on. Now. She's probably she's probably dropped it on the ground. Do you remember what happened honest, with her? Uh, keep it with that. Remember what happened with her? Uh, yeah, Enchaga. she would dropped it. Yeah, it's fine though. It's your ring. Oh fuck. Well, it seems the game is afoot, and it's time to hunt some silk. We'll see how well we do with that next episode. Thanks very much for watching, listening, subscribing. Happy gaming. Cheers.